went on the Florida trip to, to do that service. It's always an honor to be able to do that and represent uh, Alkire Road in that capacity where we can go and help people that are struggling. I don't know if you were aware of it, but that area just recently got funding uh, from the government. They, they were very lax in providing the monies that were needed to help these individuals that had suffered uh, through this hurricane. So we were all shocked when we arrived at that place. But just to uh, tell you, when we first got there, Jeff is in front of me probably by a few minutes in the car and uh, he gets on the phone and he says, isn't our hotel at the Comfort Inn? And he gave me that. I go, yeah, that's it. I said, in fact, they just sent me an email Wednesday that they were excited to see us. Well, he said, well, there's no hotel there. It's under construction. And so we had gone this way. We're down there. We have no place to stay. So we were delayed probably a few hours by the time we found a place. The people that ran that hotel also had another hotel that we ended up staying. So it started off as pretty challenging. But I wanted you to turn to Galatians 6, verse 10. And this is the thing that, you know, when you do mission work, these are the things that we look to do. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. So when we went down there, we really didn't have any idea of what we were going to come across. It wasn't anything like the, the trips that I've done to Costa Rica. We weren't really evangelizing. We were doing a construction effort. So there were some things that, we were, that were unexpected. So we actually got to help one individual, uh, mostly that's the slides that I'm going to present will show her house. She had lost her family. She had four kids. She had lost the entire house. They had to be out of their FEMA trailer by May, May 8th, I think was the date. And so this house, as you'll see in the pictures, was totally devastated. Uh, we weren't sure of our contacts as far as the church. Mark Cremines with the disaster response team didn't really give us a heads up. So Sunday morning, we show up at the Palo Alto Church, and we march in, as proud Christians do, and we sit in the front row. The next thing I know, there's a praise team behind us. And Jeff and I lean over at the same time and say, we've got to go. So we had to get up, march out in front of everybody, which gave another example of Christian faith. We had to stand our ground, so it started off as uncomfortable. Uh, we then started getting on our phones trying to find another congregation, and we found another congregation that was actually right by our hotel. I walk in there, and it was an anti-congregation, and so I had a discussion with that minister there for a little bit, and then finally we found a church. It's called the Beach Church of Christ. And we talked to those individuals there to make sure that they had all their needs met after the hurricane and they were all fine. So there were things that kind of caught us off guard. The other thing that caught me off guard was I mentioned to, I believe it was either Nick or Jeff, and I said, look, I'm a concrete guy. I've built buildings and that's my specialty. I like doing those type of things. I hate drywall and paint. I'd rather do anything but drywall and paint. So all we did was drywall and paint. So those, those type of things caught us off guard. I tried to designate and point fingers, but anyway, I ended up doing the drywall and paint. But, you know, when we had these opportunities, talking with those people there, they said, you know, if it wasn't for the Church of Christ, we wouldn't have got any help. And that was a good service that we were doing down there, that those, that those people, those individuals that we were talking to and helping um, they realized that it was the church. And I know the lady that we helped with her house, um, she, had a, she came from a denominational background, and I know that we had given her some tracks to study with, but she was really grateful uh, for the help we did. We helped another lady, and again, uh, we left her with some tracks, and I know Danielle and her uh, developed a relationship, and she was going to keep in touch with Danielle, and you'll see with those slides. But I'm going to go uh, move forward with that, and then... Um, after the slide presentation, um, I will do the invitation. Sonny, can I see it on this monitor up here?
Maybe not. Can I see it on the monitor up here? Okay. That way I don't have to, I don't have to go down there and they see my bald head. I'm sorry. Well, I was thinking that my reflection on my head would <laughs> be easier up here. So this is the hotel that we were supposed to stay at. So this is what we pulled into, and you can imagine when you have a group of eight people that you're kind of uh, uncomfortable. This place was a disaster. It looked like the hurricane had hit yesterday, and it caught us all off guard. And so I, I of course, I was the lead, I guess you would call the group, and I'm, oh man, we're gonna be intense. This is gonna be terrible. But this is the, the hotel we were supposed to stay at. Um, that's a picture of the, uh, the entry of that. You can see the sign is still uh, leaning from the damage. So this house here, um, they asked us if we could go to another house that people had been working on. And we're like, well, yeah, we can, we can go there. Well, we end up at this house. This house has been sitting six months after water damage. Uh, hasn't been opened and they told us that there was a group of college kids Now, college kids you guys need to pay attention to this a group of college kids went into this house not knowing the, uh, the causes of mold and how bad it was and I heard that some of them were sick because they went in this house and were helping so always kind of ask questions when you go in and see that's a trailer that the people were staying at, but I wanted to get to the mold part. So this is the inside of the house. And so a group of kids were in there cleaning that out the day before we got there. Jeff and I and Nick, we opened the window and the ammonia smell from the mold about knocked us over. So obviously we didn't take our group in there, but this is a typical situation in this neighborhood. All those homes have been sitting there for six months uh, because the people were not allowed in there to clean it up. There's some more pictures, but you can just see the damage that was done. And again, you take into account this hurricane hit in last October. So this is the house that, the, that we mainly worked on. Uh, the, uh, some of the work had already been done, but the front of the house was totally removed. They had done some of the roof already. The roof was totally gone. I don't have any pictures of that, but these people were again, and I'm not sure how the, the government works on this, but FEMA for some reason said they had to be out of their trailer by May 8th. I don't know what the rush was, but anyway, so you can see the pile of uh, debris that's in, in front of this house. And that is all the streets in this area. There's a pile of debris. The uh, city had, um, because they weren't getting any more funding from the government, was, had stopped picking up all of the trash that was uh, caused by the hurricane. So this is Nick in front of the house that we weren't going into. And uh, again, that's the, uh, that was the reason, because of the mold. So there's Jeff. Jeff and I, um, any, I could, anything to get out of drywall and paint. He said, can anybody build a porch? Yes, I can build a porch. So Jeff and I started building this porch the uh, city officials had decided those are six by six posts and typically four by four posts, but six by six are basically columns. So uh, the code had really changed after this hurricane and how you had to build things and uh, erect things. And they were very specific on how they wanted things done. Okay. That's not the one I want. They don't want to show the picture of those two. I believe that is, is that uh, Jeff and Scott or Nick and Scott? But anyway, that's how we were in there. You can see the small space. That's the, I believe that's the bathroom of this house. And you can see how low the ceilings are. So that's what we were working with as far as um, inside this house. Also a funny thing, there was a group of people, um, they were elderly people and they were helping and so 
Now, Costa Rica was a little more primitive, but so you'd have a tool, and you're in the middle of working, and these, these elderly people would come in, and they would just take your tool and go do something else. And so we, we're standing there, we couldn't get anything done, so, but uh, a lot of times it was just working with a house full of people, and uh, it got a lot of things accomplished. I'm trying to figure out how to use an air nailer. That was, if you didn't, if you noticed, that was Melinda behind me telling me how to do it. <laughs> I really am pushing this button once. So there they are again in that uh, small space and uh, all that wiring is to code. So this is the back of the house. Now the, um, if you look at the barn structure on the back side there that's where those people were staying uh, they had got that as a housing and how she ended up with this um, she went to a place they delivered it she tried to find out how to pay for it and the, when she called the place they said well it's already paid for she has no idea how this place was paid for so she got this barn basically for free but her family she had a, uh, a Melinda was she a hair salon she she did something like that, and she had that opened up in her in that house. Um, so that's she's there. The house that we're working on is in front there. So the guy in the black T-shirt is Mark Cremines. Uh, the gentleman to his left, or be his right, our left. He is. Uh, I don't remember his name, but he's actually not a member of the church. And he is volunteering his time, and I got to talk to him a little while, but he's volunteering his time to help Mark, and so that influence, I hope, would help him uh, grow as well. But Mark Means is the one that does the disaster response. He, uh, he's not into the, I don't want to say it in a bad way, he's not really into the evangelistic side. He's more, he just wants to go and help and build. And I'm going to talk with uh, Bill Phyllis regarding that, and we might be able to help him on the evangelistic side as far as being able to reach people better, um, you know, set up Bible studies with them as you're helping. I know that we asked a lot of people when we were helping them if, we, if there was a chance we could give them a track or sit down with them, and uh, that's what we tried to do. So, again, the, uh, that's the house we're working on. That's the... <laughs> That was her sister's house, and her sister um, didn't want her to use anything of her house. I don't know what happened there, but they were neighbors, but she didn't want us to use anything that was the electric or anything. So um, she made her do everything. But pay attention to all the trash. Again, that's how bad that, uh, that, that location still was at that time. So uh, these are the gentlemen. Yeah, um, I can't recall the guy's name in the white, but they were from Alabama. And so we had a, an Ohio State and Alabama uh, thing. And Jeff and I had worked on the structure of this porch, as you saw. And I asked, and I guess the guy from Alabama is a really good carpenter. And I said, well, did you understand everything we did up here? And he said, not at all. <laughs> I said, okay, well, make it look good. So the house got a fresh coat of paint. Um, the lady was just ecstatic when she came out and saw how, what her house looked like. There's Melinda. She directed this side of the painting, and you can see how much better the house was looking. I hate painting. And Kelsey got to learn a lot. Kelsey and Danielle had a new appreciation for drywall work. Um, when we went to the uh, beach church, Danielle and Kelsey were out in the lobby at the restroom, and uh, Danielle was close in on a corner on the drywall, and she was telling Kelsey that they did a really good job of drywalling as the preacher came out. 
and he wondered what Danielle was doing, and she said, you've got really nice drywall here. <laughs> yep, that's my daughter. Again, you can see how the house has improved as we moved along. So that's kind of the house. That was the best of finished look I had. If you go online, you can see the inside of this house after they had completed that. So this house here, this was another lady that, we, um, that she called, said she needed help. And where that wall is uh, at, you can see where we've patched all that. That was just an open space that she had uh, a, a bad leak from the storm. It had actually blown the back of her roof off and all of her grass. They had trees. They showed me pictures of the neighborhood and it was full of trees and everything. We go there and there was just nothing but houses. Uh, the trees were gone. The grass was uprooted. It was just dirt and these homes. So we went in and helped uh, her. We uh, put that drywall in. And I'm going to want to show you. If you look real close to the top of that uh, fireplace, that patch, she had a contractor come in, and it, it was kind of sad that they were doing this. And it's almost legal gouging is what it is. But that little piece of drywall, she said a contractor came in and said that it would cost $3,800 to patch that little piece of drywall. And she said that he, she asked him, said, well, that's too expensive. He said, well, that's what I'm getting right now. So that's the situation that these people were facing. People were taking advantage of them. So we were able to help her with that. Again, that was over the door, but that's the part of her house that had blown off. So this is her, so that yard was obviously full of grass and there were trees all through her backyard from the picture and so uh, they had delivered sod. Now that lady is um, in her late 70s and she told a story. She liked, she's very independent. She didn't want Danielle to help or anything with the sod but she actually had a neighbor across the street that would help her out occasionally. Well she climbed up on her roof and when she climbed up there she kicked her ladder off. And her, that neighbor was driving by, and she just, she just said, hi, Bill, like everything was okay. She was not going to let him know that she was stuck on the roof. She waited till another neighbor came, but uh, she's very uh, independent. So there's our group that went. So there wasn't a lot of pictures of Rich. I warned Rich this morning. I couldn't find any. I guess we took all our pictures at the beginning. Rich was, came a couple days later. And uh, so you can see that uh, everybody was, uh, we worked hard. And it, was, it was hot. There's another picture on the front porch. That might be it. So I wanted, by, by way of invitation, um, you know, when we were down there, we talked, Jeff, Jeff came up with this, by, by the way, and this would be a good lesson for any of our preachers in here to present. Uh, and they can really make a good sermon out of this. So we talked, first thing we did was went to Denny's, which I wanted to go to Chili's, but they wanted to go to Denny's. And so we ended up at Denny's, and that's an inside joke, so the people that were there. But anyway, I talked to a waitress there. She said when the hurricane hit, it was like the whole community had just had nowhere to go. And this waitress told us that she had a shopping cart, and I think, she, I believe she had two kids. And they had a shopping cart, and they basically were walking the streets with no place to go. They had no family. They didn't have anything. And you know, Jeff pointed out, he came up to me and he said, you know, if something like that happened here, we have each other. You know, we have the church. If those people belonged to a church, they would have had some place to go. You know, we're, we're, we're a family here. Those people didn't, when they're in that situation, when they don't have God, they don't have a family. And I just wanted to read over here, and everybody's familiar with these verses. 
Just go over to Acts chapter 2. Verses 42 to 47. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as any one had need. So here we have an example when the church began. There were people that had things, and there were people that didn't have things. And they were there together helping each other out. So people did things to help that, those people out. But continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And you know, we read earlier on how those people were being saved. They heard the word, they believed it, they confessed, they repented, they were baptized, they remained faithful. These people were added to the church in Galatians 3.27, it says, For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You know, we have that opportunity uh, to be, become part of that family and have a family to depend on, have a family that can pray for us, have somebody that we can call when we're in need. And that's what it's here. That's what's here. And there, there were people that didn't have that. And it was very sad to hear that they had no place to go. So I wanted to offer that as an invitation. If you are someone who isn't in Christ, and if something drastic happened, where would you turn? Do you have a family to turn to? You have an opportunity now to uh, join this church, and the, and the Lord adds you to this church. You're not voted in. Nothing like that. God promises if you obey and follow the commandments, you're going to be added to this body. So if you have any needs, if you're someone who's an erring member um, and you need to make things right, this is also another opportunity for you to come together as we stand and sing.